Who did the dancing? <laughs> That's awesome. That's hilarious. That's awesome. Oh man. Good shit. Heavy fool. We are somewhat in, and last time I ran out of time for the questions. I thought I could have time to go through technical stuff, but then again, that would probably be a lot of setup. So, hey, let's get some questions. I know a lot of people got some. I hope. It's weird, right? I go to people, they're like, do you use Poser? Like, they, they're like, why not Maya? Why not 3DS Max? I use Poser because of its limitations. If you're familiar with Poser, it's the, it's the cheap end 3D animation software, but it does all the basics. Diffuse, bump maps, specular, keyframes, graph editor, all the stuff you need out of a 3D edit editing program. The reason being, it has the best library system where if you wanted to, if you wanted to save a pose, and you'll see, a lot of recycled animations in my movies, the same spin kick, you know, hide it differently just for the sake of being able to throw things in fast. This is the difference now. The difference now with this mocap set, um, that video there took me five days. Five days and it's about ten times more movement than uh, a three minute episode of Dead Fantasy. Therefore, we're expecting to see longer movies with more happening and just the, the difference now is just a tremendous amount of delivery and time frame. So, um, I'll describe that. And I use Poser because it's fast, you know, and the, the depth, my second program might be Maya, but the depths of Maya you can get so easily caught into just because it does everything. And it's, it's, it's just a deep hole you can dive into. And my using Maya recently, actually, I've gotten much better at it. I see the possibility and I can spend forever in it, but this goes back to me saying, um, you have to be less of an artist at times because if you give an artist forever, he will take forever. <laughs> it's not going to run at this resolution, but this is the program. And um, the library editor, here's a really fast example. If I wanted Squall, or not Squall, Cloud to come in and I wanted him to do, I don't know, something I've saved. Let's say it's, uh, this is, oh, but this, this is a new Cloud. Uh, last time you saw him, he wasn't finished, he was missing pieces, so that's why I didn't really do much with him, but I, I just threw, this is a character I just threw in just now, and what if, I wanted, what if I wanted him to do something real fast that I've saved, let's say, uh, sure. And the, the best part is, you, you drop multiple pieces in, you mix and match. <laughs> All compatible skeletons and poses. That's the reason. You, if you work off of the. Oops, sorry. There we go. Very sexy client. Yes. Well, that would be the reason. Just that right, that example right there. And imagine, I've got, a, I've got a library of dozens of poses. I could use the front end of one and the back end of the other, mix in between. That's sweet, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Next question. So, um, the backdrop, when you're doing those poses that you did yourself, the dancing, yep. is there going to be a blue screen or a green screen? You know, oh, there's no backdrop necessary. Oh, you mean in the... In the video, or what I use to record it. Those, those, those motion capture works via infrared cameras that see only the dots. So there could be plenty in the room, so long as they're not infrared reflective, right? The cameras emit an infrared beam that the dots only see, and then I have eight cameras in that room. 
and they triangulate the position of each dot. There's three on like each shoulder, three on the hands, and it judges the distances between and assigns bones to them, and therefore allows me to do uh, motion, ca motion capture pretty much. Yes. So you're, you're using your skeleton as a base. Right. So for certain things like that, you know. Uh, I do a motion. I do that dance, but my legs aren't long enough. I have to do corrective. You know, the, the, the miscon misconception about motion capture is it does the work for you. That is completely wrong. The movies make it look like you know motion capture solves all your problems. It's absolutely not true. And you know, sometimes I'm wary of telling people I use motion capture. They say, "Oh, I'm something less of an artist," despite up until now not having actually used motion capture. But the case being, there's a lot of cleanup. Like my legs aren't as long. My shoulder widths aren't the same. But like so, for ex for example, if the girls when they put their hands together like this. Their arms are longer, so their hands go like this. And I have to do a lot of corrective work. And there's some gimbal lock involved in the shoulder rotation. So when you're switching the character around, you have to do it because you have to um, equivalent their structure. Right. The poser itself, there are other programs that are better for it. I'd say Motion Builder even. This is probably the best to translate motion capture. Poser itself simply reads joint rotation. It says, my hand moved up this far, this uh, clavicle bone moved 45 degrees, and it doesn't care what, how much, if the arm is 30 feet long, it's still going to do it. It won't read the endpoints or where the destination is. So interact, interaction is tough, which is why in the movies you see motion capture is done via, they cast an actor who has the same face and skeleton that's very, very similar to the person who's being projected on screen. So there's less it, Yes, yes. Yes, yes, I am. I do do the hard work. Who else? Yo. Um, what, what program do you use to make the fingers themselves? I use it. Oh, here's a perfect example. Honey, come up here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I made this costume uh, starting. Oh, yeah. No, just stand right there. All right. I made this costume starting Monday. Uh, finished it on the drive here. On the drive? Yeah, you know. Yeah, the drive. Thank you. Thank you. The making a model for me is not like making a model for other people. The first thing we did is we went clothes shopping. That's a leather jacket we found at H&M. At There's a skirt under there that some really, uh, some really, like some corner store down in uh, Johnston, Rhode Island where we found a leather skirt, and then I bought raw material. Now, this is a good metaphor for how I build stuff. I start with things that already work, design-wise or functional functionally-wise. So like, uh, back to Dead Fantasy 1, those are the actual models from Final Fantasy X. Some very nice person whom I have a lot of thanks for ripped the models out of the game, and most everyone else out there who has, who, who has been able to rip them, they'll make poses or porn or something, but I myself, thanks honey, I myself decided I want to make a movie with it. You know, who'd have thought? You can use the models to make a movie, it's fine. Now, moving down, I've got, you know, you saw Tifa a second ago, or Cloud here, uh, he's built off of parts that work, and then parts that I need, like his hair is from Crisis Core, but his pants are from Kingdom Hearts, and then I substitute the parts that I don't think are, de are detailed enough and go from there. The program I use is Maya, and I've only been using it recently, but I build a model in Maya and drop it into Poser as a single object, and then Poser assigns skeletons for me. Very, very easy. And uh, I do do modeling, but I try to avoid it because it's one of those things that takes up a lot of time. You're technically rebuilding a human, and it's, there's a lot of biology involved. And I guarantee you my biology probably isn't right. <laughs> Who else? Anyone else? Yo. When would you say you got into all this? Uh, it's tough to say. Um, I've always wanted to make movies, I guess. Um, I used to do a lot of still work, and I would always think of those as like frames from the movies I wish I'd made. I started, I mean, you know, I, I started making films because me and my buddies who play Tekken together. Sup, Greg? Yep. <laughs> would be like, I, you know, if, 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 it was, if it was now back then, I'd be like, what superpower you have? And you see my old stuff, it'd be like, 